Former Toronto Blue Jays relief pitcher Mike Bolsinger is suing the Houston Astros for damages resulting from their 2017 sign-stealing scheme. If I had to make any predictions on the likelihood of success of this lawsuit, I would predict a huge strikeout. <laughs> I was up until about 2 o'clock thinking of that pun. <laughs> Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and if you had told me five years ago that I would be doing a vlog breaking down a baseball-related lawsuit, I would have said, who the heck is Viva Fry? But here we are, and today I'm going to be walking you through the Mike Bolsinger lawsuit against the Houston Astros, breaking it down and explaining it because there are very interesting questions in fact and in law that result from this lawsuit. The most important of which is what in law we refer to as the causal link between the alleged faulty act and the alleged damages sustained. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, let's just jump right into the lawsuit and the introductory paragraphs really set out the fact pattern that we need to bear in mind throughout the lawsuit. Garagos and Garagos, attorneys for plaintiff Michael Bolsinger. Garagos and Garagos, more specifically Mark Garagos and Tina Glanjan, were at one point representing Jussie Smollett. They were representing Jussie Smollett and they are currently being sued for defamation by the Osundara brothers for representations they made ostensibly in connection with the representation of Jussie Smollett. All that to say, if the name sounds familiar, that is why I am not the one who blacked out their telephone number, fax number, etc. I guess whoever filed this document with Scribd didn't want to give them any free advertising. Back to the lawsuit. Michael Bolsinger, an individual plaintiff versus Houston Astros LLC, a limited liability company, and Doe's 1 through 300 inclusive defendants. Complaint for damages. 1. Unfair business practices. 2. Negligence. 3. Intentional interference with contractual relations. 4. Intentional interference with prospective economic relations. 5. Negligent interference with prospective economic relations. Demand for jury trial. <sighs> I did it in one breath. I nailed it. I nailed it. And for those of you who are wondering why Michael Bolsinger is suing upwards of 300 John Doe's, it is because he knows that other people participated in the Astros sign stealing scheme. He just doesn't know who they are, how many there are, what their names are, etc, etc. The idea is as this file moves forward and the parties proceed to discovery, Michael Bolsinger will discover who the other defendants are, give them names, and add them to the lawsuit specifically. Now let's get into the allegations. Comes now plaintiff Michael Bolsinger who brings this action against defendant Houston Astros LLC for their involvement in an electronic sign stealing scheme in 2017 resulting in the defendant Astros winning the World Series. Plaintiff was a professional relief pitcher with the Toronto Blue Jays who was called into the game by his team on August 4th, 2017 after the prior pitchers on his team gave up several runs. In .1 innings pitched, Plaintiff Bolsinger gave up four runs to the defendant Astros and was immediately terminated and cut from the team never to return to Major League Baseball again. Now full disclosure, I am not that big of a baseball fan and when I first read this I thought it was a typo and that they meant one inning and not not point one of an inning, but no, they actually meant point one of one inning. I don't exactly know how you measure innings in increments of one tenth, but they are alleging that in one tenth of an inning, Michael Bolsinger gave up four runs, was cut from the Blue Jays, and never returns to Major League Baseball ever again. And Bolsinger is trying to hold the Astros and their sign-stealing scheme responsible for that fact. The defendant Astros sign-stealing scheme was recently discovered and involved a camera in the defendant Astros outfield, which video recorded and decoded the signs given by a catcher to the pitcher of an opposing team, which defendant Astros then relayed to the batter by inter alia making a bang noise from the side of the field depending on the pitch. Now I don't watch baseball, I haven't watched baseball or been to a baseball game since the Expos left Montreal, but my goodness, I know cheating is wrong, but this is freaking cool. It's actually, I'm not even mad, that's amazing. And in the next paragraph, we bring it all together and basically summarize the entire lawsuit. The defendant Astro's unlawful and tortious business practices have had consequences far beyond wins or losses and strikeouts or home runs. Indeed, the defendant Astros have been unjustly enriched in the amount of several hundred million dollars by their illicit scheme and went from a team controversially purchased through massive debt in 2011 to one of the most valuable sport franchises today with a value of approximately two billion dollars. Plaintiff seeks two categories of damages through this lawsuit. First, plaintiff seeks the consequential and general damages he suffered and continues to suffer in the form of the defendant Astros interfering with and harming his career. Second, plaintiff seeks restitution in the form of defendant Astros returning the postseason bonuses earned from winning the 2017 World Series, which, upon information and belief, is approximately $31 million. Plaintiff would seek to direct that this category of restitutionary damages relating to postseason bonuses be used exclusively for charitable causes focused on bettering the lives of children, with an emphasis on charities in Los Angeles, as well as a fund for elderly retired professional baseball players in need of financial assistance. Here we see see the two headers of damages. On the one hand, Bolsinger is trying to hold the Astros responsible for his career in the professional league being cut short. On the other hand, he's attempting to obtain a court order ordering that the roughly $31 million in World Series bonuses that the team won be ordered to be reimbursed or repaid or donated to various charities. The issue of causality is going to be an underlying issue throughout this entire proceeding. But I am predicting that there's going to be the issue of locus standing, the legal standing to make such a request. As far as the damages Bolsinger alleges to have suffered as a result of the illicit science 
stealing scheme, sure, those are damages that Bolsinger himself is entitled to claim. But as relates to the aspect of the claim where Bolsinger is seeking an order that the $31 million in World Series bonuses be repaid or reimbursed or directed towards various charities, one has to ask what legal interest Bolsinger has to make that claim. What is Bolsinger's legal standing in respect to that 30 some odd million dollars in World Series bonuses? What legal standing does he have to even ask the court to order the Astros to give that money to charity? My prediction on the second aspect of this claim is that Bolsinger has zero legal standing and the court is going to conclude as much probably on a motion to dismiss. I was also wondering on the validity of these types of conclusion, even assuming that Bolsinger has legal standing to order that monies be directed at charities as opposed to paid to the plaintiff. And apparently, although unusual, they seem to be enforceable in theory, although, you know, if I'm a judge, I'm saying, okay, I'm just going to order the damages to be paid to the person who suffered the damages, and that person can do what they want with the money. But apparently, although uncommon, it is seen that conclusions seek an order of payment to charities instead of a payment to the plaintiff, which makes the plaintiff look more philanthropic. Jurisdiction and venue. This court has jurisdiction over the present matter because, as delineated within this complaint for damages, the nature of the claims and amounts in controversy meet the requirements for unlimited jurisdiction in the Superior Court. Venue is proper in this county because a significant portion of the activities giving rise to the claims in this action occurred in the county of Los Angeles. Specifically, A. Los Angeles is the situs where the defendant Astros fraudulently won the 2017 World Series. B. Upon information and belief, dependent has member investors involved in the fraudulent scheme who reside in Los Angeles, California. And C. The impact and damages caused within the county of Los Angeles exceeds all other jurisdictions and substantial tortious conduct was directed at Los Angeles. These are the standard allegations to establish jurisdiction. Basically, the amount at issue exceeds a certain threshold, the cause of action arose in the specific jurisdiction, and or a number of the defendants reside in that specific jurisdiction. And then we get into the factual background. The roots of the defendant Astro's 2017 malicious conduct finds its origin in the massive debt and peculiar ownership structure used to acquire the team in 2011. In 2011, the Astros sold to a large investor group led by Jim Crane for approximately $680 million. The deal was the source of substantial scrutiny and controversy based on certain past conduct by the acquiring party and by the massive debt, approximately $300 million, used in the acquisition. From the outset, the defendant Astros were motivated to pay down its substantial debt, refinance, and avoid costs such as the luxury tax. Ultimately, this was done by any means necessary. Indeed, the annual annualized percent increase in the value of the Astros following the 2017 World Series season was approximately 17% or 300 million with the team now worth approximately 2 billion, a 200% increase in the value of the team since its acquisition seven years earlier. This massive financial windfall was the direct result of the sign stealing scheme. This paragraph, although somewhat convoluted, is basically setting out the motive for the fraudulent scheme. The new owners of the Astros were straddled with debt and they were looking for any means possible to eliminate that debt. Basically, they were up against a wall and if they had to resort to illegal means to eliminate that debt, they were going to do it, and they did so through the sign stealing scheme. Now, that is a nice hypothesis, it's a nice way of framing the debate, but it is very difficult to prove someone else's intentions. The fact is that the Astros did engage in a sign stealing scheme, the reasons for which, you know, we may never know, but generally speaking, money. The facts as relate to Bolsinger are a little more important and a little more nuanced. After three successful seasons as a starting pitcher at the University of Arkansas, plaintiff Mike Bolsinger began his professional baseball career in 2010 when he was selected by the Arizona Diamondbacks in 2010 MLB Players Draft. For the next four years, plaintiff Bolsinger found success as a starting pitcher at each level of the minor leagues and was promoted the following year of each season. In the beginning of the 2014 minor league season in AAA, plaintiff Bolsinger pitched a dominant first two games and was then called up following his second start. As many rookies find in their first first year in the MLB, Plaintiff Bolsinger found himself getting sent up and down throughout the season while still performing well at the minor league level and showing promise in the MLB. At the end of the season, his contract was purchased by the Los Angeles Dodgers that November. In 2015, Plaintiff Bolsinger was called up in late April to make a start where he did very well but was sent down after the game. Plaintiff was called up again in early May where in that month he won the Dodgers Pitcher of the Month at the MLB level. Plaintiff continued to have huge success and he was sent down to the minors at the beginning of August due to trades within the organization. He then got called back up on September 1st to the MLB for September call-ups and finished the year with a 3.62 ERA. Now we can go on, but we get the idea of what Bolsinger is doing here. We all know, including Bolsinger, that if this ever gets to an argument on the merits, the Astros are going to raise as a defense, Bolsinger was cut from the Blue Jays because of his performance in general and not because of one-tenth of one inning in that game against the Astros. And we can anticipate that the evidence on which the Astros would rely to make that argument is going to include Bolsinger bouncing up and down from the pros back down 
to AAA. We know that that argument is coming, so Bolsinger is getting ahead of the curve to some extent in the way he is framing the trajectory of his career. He's framing it in the way that he was being bounced up and down, but always with an upward trajectory. The Astros are going to say in their defense, you were being bounced up and down because of your own performance, and when you got cut from the Blue Jays, it really had nothing to do with us, but your career in general. But it's noteworthy that Bolsinger is anticipating what he knows will ultimately be one of the defenses of the Astros, and he's getting ahead of it by sort of preemptively responding to what will be their defense. On July 3rd, Plaintiff was called up to the MLB to begin his new journey as a reliever for the Toronto Blue Jays. After five optimistic outings of relief, Plaintiff would enter his sixth and final outing of relief against the defendant Astros in Houston. On August 4th, Plaintiff Bolsinger only saw 0.1 innings against the Astros. Plaintiff Bolsinger gave up four runs due to the Houston Astros sign-stealing scheme. This ultimately cost him his job as he was immediately sent down to AAA after the game, never to be called up again. And then we get into the description of the Astros sign-stealing scheme, which they would have gotten away with if it weren't for those meddling journalists. Paragraph 36. The defendant Astros sign-stealing scheme involved the use of a camera positioned in center field to steal signs. Team personnel from the defendant Astros would watch the feed in a hallway between the clubhouse and dugout and would relay what was coming to their hitter by hitting a garbage can. A bang usually meant that an off-speed pitch was coming and the defendant Astros personnel did not make any noise when a fastball was coming. The Athletic published an article on January 31st, 2020 where it conducted a deep statistical dive into the 2017 Astros, revealing the historically unprecedented nature of how the team improved at making contact. It found the reduction in team strikeout by 365 was by far the most in the live ball era. The Athletic wrote that the defendant Astros' strikeout rate at home took a plunge unlike anything we've seen in the last century. They went from punching out 1,452 times in 2016 to a mere 1,087 in 2017, which meant they transformed themselves from a team that was striking out at one of the highest rates in history to a team that struck out less than any team in baseball that season. Paragraph 39. In the more than 8,200 pitches tracked, more than 1,100 trash can bangs were detected. According to the data, after the defendant Astros appeared to experiment with the banging technique early in the 2017 season, it was in full effect by late May. The data detected 28 bangs in a May 28 game against Baltimore, an 8-4 Houston win, and then the sign-stealing scheme accelerated in the summer with banging on an average of about 30 pitches per game. Paragraph 40 the most bangs used by the defendant Astros in the 2017 season took place on August 4, 2017, the game when plaintiff Bolsinger was called in as a relief pitcher. In that game, there were 54 bangs documented with bangs on 12 of the 29 pitches or 41% of pitches thrown by plaintiff Bolsinger in the .1 innings of play. Based on the data, the defendant Astros had decoded and stolen the sign for essentially every pitch thrown by plaintiff and transmitted it to the Astros batters. And this is the crux of the entire lawsuit. As a direct result of his poor performance that game, the Toronto Blue Jays cut Plaintiff from their roster. Plaintiff was viewed by the Blue Jays and MLB scouts as not having the ability to perform as a relief pitcher. Plaintiff has never played in the MLB again. And then we have a few paragraphs alleging the fraudulent concealment by the Astros of their illicit scheme. The strategic legal reasons for which these allegations are being included in the lawsuit relate to what we call the statute of limitations, the prescription period one has to file a lawsuit. It varies by jurisdiction, it even varies by cause of action, but typically there is a time frame within which the lawsuit has to be filed, starting on the day from which the damage occurred. However, if one does not know of the wrongful act that actually caused the damages as a result of the concealment by the responsible party, that is what we call fraudulent concealment. And it's basically a bar to pleading that the action is prescribed. But for the Astros' fraudulent concealment, concealment of their wrongdoing, Bolsinger had no way of knowing in 2017 that the Astros might have been responsible for the damages he is now claiming. And therefore the limitations period should only start to run from the date he became aware of the fraudulent act. Alright, and then we get into the causes of action. First cause of action, unfair business practices. Plaintiff realleges and incorporates by reference each and every allegation contained in the preceding paragraphs as it is fully set forth herein. Defendant Astros sign stealing scheme constitutes unfair or fraudulent business practice or act pursuant to Business and Professions Code section 17. California Business and Professions Code section 17,200 and following prohibits unfair competition including, quote, any unlawful, unfair, or fraudulent business act or practice. Second cause of action, negligence. Defendants breach their duty by failing to properly supervise their employees working for Houston Astros LLC. Defendants made and or aided and abetted a cheating scheme which involved the use of a camera positioned in the center field to steal signs. Had defendants properly hired, trained, and supervised its employees, Plaintiff Bolsinger would not have been harmed. Instead, Plaintiff Bolsinger was terminated from his role on the Toronto Blue Jays and never returned to play baseball professionally at the major league level 
all as a result of the negligent acts of defendants. Bear it in mind the causal connection between the alleged wrongful act and the alleged damages sustained. Third cause of action, intentional interference with contractual relations. Paragraph 58, defendants made or aided and abetted a cheating scheme with the intent to interfere and cause harm to existing and prospective contracts entered by plaintiff Bolsinger, to which defendants knew that disruption in the contractual relations was certain or substantially certain to occur. Paragraph 59, plaintiff Bolsinger was damaged in the disruption of his contractual relationships, including the termination of his position as an MLB pitcher for the Toronto Blue Jays. Defendants were a substantial factor in causing Plaintiff Bolsinger's harm. And the next two causes of actions run along a similar vein. Fourth cause of action, intentional interference with prospective economic relations. Paragraph 65, defendants were aware of the economic relationships Plaintiff Bolsinger had entered and or intended to enter, including the relationship between Plaintiff Bolsinger and the Toronto Blue Jays. Paragraph 67, Plaintiff Bolsinger was damaged in the disruption of his contractual relationships, including the termination of his position as an MLB pitcher for the Toronto Blue Jays and the subsequent lost opportunity to continue to play at the major league level. Paragraph 68, defendants were a substantial factor in causing plaintiff Boltinger's harm. Fifth cause of action, negligent interference with prospective economic relations. Paragraph 75, as a direct and proximate result of defendants' wrongful conduct, plaintiff Boltinger's prospective economic relationships, including his relationship with the Toronto Blue Jays, was disruptive, and plaintiff Boltinger incurred special and general damages in an amount to be proven at trial. The basis for a claim in extra contractual liability, and that is a claim where there is no contractual relationship between the parties, relies on a wrongful act, damages sustained, and a causal link between the two. No damages, no claim. No wrongful act, no claim. And here we see in the last paragraph, the plaintiff is using terminology to connect the wrongful act with the damages as direct and proximate. And that is what Bolsinger is going to have to prove in order to hold the Astros liable for what he claims to be his damages. In order to succeed on his claim, Bolsinger is not only going to have to prove that he actually suffered damages, he's going to have to prove that the damages he actually suffered are the result of the wrongful act committed by the Astros. It's going to be virtually impossible to prove that not just as a result of the factual trajectory of Bolsinger's career. Bolsinger spent years bouncing up and down between the MLB and AAA. He spent years battling injury which by his own admission in the judicial proceedings compromised his performance. By his own admission, Bolsinger was bouncing up and down for years, and after years of bouncing up and down, up and down, at some point you actually stop bouncing back up. To prove that the reason why Bolsinger did not bounce back up is because of that one-tenth of one inning in that one game against the Houston Astros is going to be virtually impossible to prove in my humble opinion. Moreover than that is the element of human agency in what happened to Bolsinger. It wasn't like a scientific Newtonian reaction to an action. The Toronto Blue Jays made a decision not to call Bolsinger back up. The Astros did not force the Blue Jays to make that decision. The Blue Jays made it of their own volition. Given the very facts alleged in this lawsuit, I find it imminently implausible that the decision of the Toronto Blue Jays to cut Bolsinger resulted only from that one-tenth of one inning against the Astros. And the same holds true with intentional interference in contractual relations and the intentional or negligent interference with prospective economic relations. I may be wrong, but I think it is an untenable stretch in law to say that when any party cheats, they are intentionally interfering with the business relationships of other parties. All the more so in light of the fact that the alleged wrongful conduct had nothing to do with pressuring third parties not to enter into contractual relationships with the plaintiff. And to the extent that everyone can pretty much now properly attribute his poor performance in that one-tenth of one inning to the Astros sign-stealing scheme, this would presumably eliminate any doubt as to whether or not it was a bona fide poor performance by Bolsinger, and these third parties are still free to contract with him. If they still choose not to in full awareness of fact, it might have to do more with Bolsinger's career in general and not that one-tenth of one inning against the Astros. As they say in baseball, any pitcher can have a bad one-tenth of one inning. I don't actually know if anybody says that in baseball, but whatever. So that is the lawsuit, and this is my prediction. This lawsuit is getting dismissed on a motion to dismiss. But at the very least, this is bringing Bolsinger's story to light. It might have an impact on third parties who were thinking of contracting with him. It might make him a more appealing character and something of a draw to any baseball team that hires him. And that is that. If you like my videos and you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and drop a comment in the comment section below. It feeds the algorithm. If you want to support the channel and get some merch, all of the merch links are in the pinned comment. There's also a PayPal link for anybody who wants to support the channel that way. And now you know your vlog. Peace out. We are.